Good morning. Uh, I see there are some uh, early birds this morning, so good to be here with you. Um, so my name is Jan Koku. I'm a Thaibot Technologies uh, CEO, and uh, I'm going to try to... Yes, it works. Okay, uh, Thaibot Technologies, uh, we are an AG tech startup. Uh, we develop assistant robots for the poultry industry. So probably a little bit different than what you see here, uh, usually on uh, the uh, exhibition area. Um, we, uh, we are a few now, few exhibitors, uh, presenting also solution for the uh, livestock. Um, we were really born from the field, or I should say from, uh, from the poultry house. My co-founder, um, Ben Savary, was here yesterday. He has been a poultry uh, breeder for 15 years uh, with a group called uh, Aviagen, one of the two major genetics company uh, in the uh, poultry industry. Um, he's the one who came up with the idea of uh, trying to have robots to um, make uh, a farmer's, a poultry farmer's life a little bit easier on a, on a daily basis. And then I, I came and I joined um, a little bit later, maybe six months after the company was created, uh, and I come more with a background in uh, startups, fundraising, and, uh, and strategy. Uh, so why do we need uh, robots uh, in uh, livestock today? Well, the uh, poultry industry uh, must increase production in order to feed uh, a growing world population. Uh, as you know, this is a major challenge for any company working in the agri-tech today. But there is a particular emphasis being put on poultry industry. Uh, as you see, the poultry consumption is due to increase by 45% uh, between 2010 and 2030. Those are OECD's figures. And this is mainly due because um, the poultry proteins is one of the cheaper ones and one that also puts the less, uh, has the less impact uh, on, on environment to be, uh, to be produced. Now, if you add this, uh, we will have to produce more, but we will have to produce differently. Um, consumers now have expectations in terms of quality of product. They want, for example, antibiotic-free, and they also have expectations in terms of animal welfare. This increase of production also has to take place in a context of labor shortage uh, at a worldwide level. Uh, those are some of the figures. I'm not going to comment them here, but uh, you can see that even if you find workers, one of the problem in this uh, industry is to actually keep your workers. 58% of work wor workers quit their job within the first 90 days. This is a, a U.S. figures. So robots. Uh, okay, we're going to need robots in the poultry industry, but uh, are we there yet? Um, at uh, Thaibot Technology, we uh, currently have uh, two types of robots. Um, one that is called uh, Sputnik, and then uh, his uh, little brother, or big brother, I should say, is called Sputnik Nav. They are addressing different types of production. Uh, the, first, uh, the first robot, uh, Sputnik, we have been selling for two years now. Uh, we sell in 15 different countries and we address what is called breeders and layers. And this robot is mainly there to reduce what you call the flow eggs, what you can see on, uh, on the second picture there. Uh, this is when flow eggs are badly controlled, uh, then you can find 10%, um, 15% of your production on the floor. And today, with the current regulation, uh, flow eggs are uh, discarded. They uh, either end up uh, in the garbage, or sometimes, if they're not too dirty, they can be washed and they re-enter a production cycle. But it's, uh, you have to uh, definitely trace those eggs. And the other one is for broilers. 
Um, and uh, this robot, uh, we'll see in a few minutes, uh, what, uh, what's our value proposal. So two robots will address all types of production and uh, basically, um, I would say, what, what difference do we make? Okay, our robots are here for three main things. We move the flock, we maintain a good leader, and uh, I would say our robots are restless assistants. Um, the main benefits are improved profitability, uh, improved animal welfare, and also improved working comforts. So I'm not going to go through all of, the, all of those, and maybe if you have questions, we can discuss this during the Q&A session. But basically, what you see is that by moving the flock, you're actually going to improve quite a lot of the technical results that you get into a poultry house. So you can decrease cost, for example, by actually having birds getting more weight while they eat less. Uh, it sounds a bit bizarre, but uh, basically uh, it's a little bit like uh, if, uh, if you do sports, uh, you're going to be in better health, and whatever you eat, you will transform better, and you will transform it in muscles rather than in fat. We maintain good litter, and uh, that, uh, that means that we also have an impact there on animal welfare, because the litter, the bedding on the ground uh, can be... Um, can be conducive to a number of, uh, of uh, health uh, problems. And finally, we're really going to help, uh, that's, I would say, uh, how the company started, uh, to start and to help uh, farmers to, uh, to have better working condition. The first thing they ask, really, is to, uh, to save, to have, to, for, for our solution to, to, uh, to save time, to give them some extra time to do other tasks and uh, added value tasks. Um, how do we do this? I'm only going to speak to uh, about our latest uh, product that uh, we just launched uh, uh, four weeks ago, which is called the uh, Sputnik Nav. Um, I think there is a video, but I am not sure if I can start it myself. Or if someone can start the video by uh, pressing on the picture of the robot. It doesn't work. It does not work. Okay. <clears throat> so basically here we have a robot that's going to work uh, 8, 9, 10 hours a day. Uh, just uh, moving back and forth uh, within the, uh, the poultry house. So it's, it's going to move the flock uh, seven days a week. And by doing so, um, as I say, we're going to improve the, uh, what is called the feed conversion ratio and the uh, weight gain. Uh, the, um, this robot took us quite a long time to develop uh, because it's equipped with an indoor navigation uh, system. And actually, having an indoor navigation system in a poultry house is quite complicated uh, because you cannot rely on GPS, you cannot rely on uh, RTK like you have in the field. And there is a number of uh, other solutions such as an uh, optical system, for example, that cannot be used uh, because, uh, because of the dust. Um, then you have in the back a scrapper that is equipped with uh, different types of, uh, of tools. Uh, and uh, the idea here is only to scrap the top of the litter, not to go too deep, because if you go too deep, you are actually going to bring back bacteria that were under uh, fresh litter, uh, and you don't want to reactivate uh, those uh, bacteria by bringing them up uh, to the surface and bringing oxygen in the, uh, in the bacteria. So I think this is where we had the video maybe but yeah we're just gonna watch maybe just the first uh, one minute and a half here we are actually in a turkey house um, <clears throat> what you see on the top of the robot here people usually think those are antennas for telecommunication they're absolutely not here for telecommunication they are here to stimulate the birds to move um, you can have the best indoor navigation system if you have birds not moving in front of your robot. You're going to have a wall of birds and they will stop your robot anyway at, uh, at some point. 
So scrapper here, we have obviously a very good uh, leader still at this stage. But the idea is to try to keep the leader as good as possible, as long as possible. OK, <clears throat> I'll move on. Basically, each time we put a robot on the, um, on, on the market for commercialization, uh, we uh, do uh, about uh, 12 months of uh, field test. So here are some of the results we got. Um, what you see here on the two arrows are uh, the uh, improvements in uh, what you call the feed conversion ratio. So basically, we improve the feed conversion ratio by eight points. And uh, the average daily gain under what you see at the end is that uh, your, uh, your chicken will weigh 150 grams more uh, in the house where the robot was working. Those are like winter field tests. Uh, and uh, we also have, uh, if you want to come and see me, I have more results in spring and uh, summer. Thank you very much. Is there any question? I think we have a few minutes if there are questions. Yes. All right, yes, we can take one or two questions. We have like four minutes before the second pitch, so if there are any questions, otherwise, yes, there's one here. Hi. How big do you think the market is for uh, those, in terms of numbers of robots for those robots? Um, what, uh, what, what we look at, the indicator in our case, not so much the number of farms, but the number of house. So obviously you will have the small farm that maybe only have one or two poultry house, and then you have very large companies that sometimes have like 30 or 40 different buildings. Uh, so we have done some study on uh, Western Europe, uh, North America, and uh, what we found out here is that um, we can have a, a market of uh, 11 billion euros uh, in terms of revenue.